name of Jesus, thank you, oh God, for how you allowed us to come together one more time. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, by you allowed us to sleep on the night, oh God, and you allowed us, oh God, to rise up this morning, Lord, and clothe in our right mind. Oh God, and oh God, how you watched over and kept us from hurt, harm, and danger. Father, we pray you bless our pastor as he go into your word, Lord God. Help us, oh God. Oh God, to, to get a hold of your word, Lord God, and apply it to our lives, oh God, and be obedient, not only to be here, but to be doers on the but here is on the but to be able to do what you require us, oh God. We pray, oh God, bless each and every one of us, Lord. Remember the sick and shed and the bereaved families everywhere. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name, let us all say amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Elder James. We thank God for you that are here uh, at this time. We're going to go ahead and uh, begin our lesson today. Uh, you'll find us in James chapter 1, uh, I believe, on in our last class, which was Tuesday evening. I believe we... Uh, ended around verse 20, 21, praise God. Um, <clears throat> I, I wanna uh, go back up to um, uh, verse uh, 18. And our writer says, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures, praise God. And um, I was just looking at this a, a few minutes ago and, um, and he says of his own will, of his own pleasure, his own purpose, uh, begot he, us. Um, what is interesting to me is when you go back to uh, earlier in the, the chapter, and when he's on the subject that God does not tempt man uh, to do evil, and then he then gives us really um, how that comes about uh, when he says in verse 15, he says, 14 rather, but every man is tempted, to, that is to sin, when he is drawn away of his own lust, his own desires and enticed. Then he makes this statement. He says, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when and sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. So ultimately, those desires, if unchecked, if not changed, uh, begets, if you will, death, praise God. Um, but in 18, he says, of his own will begot he us, praise God, and with his word of truth, which should be a kind, which that we should be a kind of first fruits, and specifically here he is talking to his immediate audience, the Jews, of his creatures, uh, speaking of, of his entire creation, uh, which also, which would then include, encompass the Gentiles as well. Um, and when you be, look at this, so what he begets with his word really uh, is life as opposed to what we beget uh, in with our flesh, which is uh, in our own desires, uh, death. Um, in St. John chapter 10, verse 10, he says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and, and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly praise God amen so he he, he brings life and um, St. John in that same book uh, 314 uh, St. John 3 uh, excuse me 3 uh, 16 that very familiar passage for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting 
life, praise God. So as opposed to that which begets or can uh, bring forth death, the Lord begets us or brings forth us through his gospel uh, light, and not only life in, in this you know, in this world, but even in that which is to come, eternal life, all right? And so even in our previous um, uh, book that we have studied, Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse, uh, if you would go there with us, verse, um, let's see, Hebrews 10, uh, verse, um, 39, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, which means destruction, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Now there, it's not just simply talking about an Acts 2.38 experience, but it's talking about being saved throughout eternity, praise God. And so that's what we, we look forward to, amen, praise God, is that eternal salvation or that eternal Amen. Praise God. Life with the Lord. And so I, I, I just wanted to get that part in it. So as we go down into the rest, the remainder of this chapter, he says, then wherefore, my beloved brethren, verse 19, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. And then he says, for the wrath of man worketh, it does not work righteousness, uh, it does not work righteous, the righteousness of God. Then he says, wherefore lay aside or set apart the filthiness or and the superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save, here we again, save your souls. So when again, as we stated on our last, in our last class, all filthiness here signifies impurity that cleaves to the body. All right, in a natural sense, but applied, but in, in so in a spiritual sense here, it is applied to the mind. It uh, it implies all impurity, unholy affections, such as those again that are tied to that fifteenth verse in our lesson text, which pollute the soul. Okay, and then he talks about uh, and superfluity of naughtiness. That is the overflowing of wickedness, praise God. Um, but then he also, he says, and you know, lay these aside and receive with meekness the engrafted, that is the implanted word, praise God. And so when it talks about in terms of the word being planted, the word which has taken root in you and Again, he, and he's speaking even to, again, to his readers, he speak, he's speaking not to those, you know, unbelievers, but those that have accepted the Lord, those that have believed, and he's encouraging them, you know, you already, you know, it, it is already in your heart, but you must continue receiving uh, what has been heard, all right, and that sort of ties uh to that 25th verse, which we're going to get to soon. Bishop. Yes. Can I ask you a question? Uh-huh. That 21st verse, is that saying the same thing as Hebrews 12 and 1? When it says, lay aside every weight. Is that the same thing? Uh, you can, mm -hmm. you can, yeah, they, they are, they are, they are closely related. They're, they're tied. Um, but it, it talks about in verse in, in Hebrews 12 and 1, wherefore seeing we are so compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every uh, weight. Now see, it the 21 in our text goes deeper. Uh, uh, the weight um, is not necessarily sin, but holding on to the weight will probably, will most likely lead you to sin, okay? So, and the second part, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Okay, in our, in our chapter, it is looking at, again, it, 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 it is tying uh, really 21 to the, that which uh, is, uh, is, is uh, 
described or the genesis of which is described in, uh, in verse 15 of our lesson. Again, what happens is, you know, man is drawn when, when, but every man is tempted to sin when he is drawn away, lured, not by the Lord, but look at what it says, uh, of his own lust, you see. And that's what, the, that's what our enemy capitalizes on, all right, is our desires, okay? And so, and, and entice, in other words, and that word entice there, lured by a bait, okay? Then, but here again, it, it just doesn't end there, but then lust have, but when lust is conceived, all right, or has been, you know, uh, is, is conceived, it brings forth something or begets something, and that is sin. And sin, when it is finished or has its complete work, does what? It brings forth death. Praise God. Amen. Now, in, in Hebrews 12 and 1, again, it, it talks about those things that will impede your progress in this race. Okay. And, and certainly those weights uh, that's, in, and again, and, and sin will impede your progress. And this is the thing, again, that he's speaking to. So he's letting them know, do not err. Don't roam from the truth, my brother. Okay. God does not do this. This is, this is what is in us. And that's why, you know, what Paul talks about it this way, in my flesh dwell of what? No good, no thing. good thing. Thank you. Almost like a choir. No good thing. We have to recognize that. All right. Paul is saying this, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, but he realizes and he recognizes that in my flesh, if flesh rules, there's no good. Okay. Verse 17 in our lesson text in St. James 1:17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, praise God. Amen. It comes from him, not from us, praise God. All right. So, so what he does, and again, verse 19, he, he talks about slow to wrath, and he expands on that in verse number 20. All right. And, and and he, and verse 20, and again, and, 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 and he makes that encouragement, but then he takes what he said um, also in that 19th verse, let every man be swift to hear. And that means to be ready to hear. I don't know, but when it comes to the word of God or or the receiving uh, of the word of God, guess what? We have to be ready, prepared. Praise God, amen. And so when you think about it, verse 22, he says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. All right. So what he's encouraging them is to, but be ye doers, that is performers of the word of what you have heard and not only hearers only, because if we're simply a hearer, then all we're doing is deceiving ourselves. Okay. Matthew uh, 15. Excuse me, Bishop. Yes. Praise the Lord. Um, in 21, the word meekness, yes. does that mean um, a, a teachable heart or submissive? Well, uh, uh, I, I, I like what you said. Both. Okay. Uh, we, again, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's how we receive the word. We, we receive it in meekness. As you say, in, 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 in being submissive, but also implying also that you're teachable. So you're ready to, you're, you're ready, willing to receive. 
Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Um, Matthew 15 and 8. Uh, you all bear with me because I got a, I think a number of scriptures to go through. But 15 and 8 says. Excuse me. All right, so 15 and 8 says, the people draweth, this is the Lord speaking here, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. But he also says, but their heart is far from me. Everyone see that? Amen. Amen. So this is this is this is the Lord's assessment of his people. Um, hey, Bishop. Yes. Wouldn't the ninth verse go along with that too? It, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines of commandments of men. Yes, that goes along with it. Yes. Uh huh. Absolutely. Um, And so when he when he when he when he when he talks about teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, he is speaking uh, primarily to those Pharisees, okay, uh, those that would be considered in um, their religious leaders at, of that time, okay. Instead of teaching the word, they're teaching uh, the doctrines and the commandments of men. Um, and he, as he says in a in, a, in another portion of, of, of the book uh, of, of this particular gospel that thereby making the word of God of none effect. Okay. Uh, I want to take you to Ezekiel uh, chapter 33. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 33, I'm going to begin at verse 30. Um, if I had time, I would read it in its entirety, but we'll, we'll begin here. And he says, also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses and speak one to another, everyone to his brother saying, come, I pray you and hear that what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh and they sit before thee as my people and they hear thy words, but they will not do them for with their mouth, they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. All right. And so this is how the Lord describes his people to the prophet uh, Ezekiel here. Um, I believe also he talks about that, uh, again, uh, he will not send them to a people of a strange uh, language, but he's sending them to his own people. And he also says, but they will not hear. And, and so, Again, they have this form. Uh, they look as if they are, you know, uh, are, are hearing intently with the idea that they are going to perform what is being um, uh, uh, spoken of, but there's no intention in their hearts uh, to do what is being uh, performed of what is being uh, commanded in the word. Now, this is one thing that we, we really have to be uh, 
uh, aware of and cognizant of is the fact that, you know, there are those that simply think that all I need to do is hear the word of God. In other words, I need to give the Lord the respect of when his word comes forth that I need to hear it. All right. And so I'm going, no matter if it's there coming forth for an hour, hour and a half, I'm going to sit, you know, piously before the Lord and I'm going to hear what God is saying. But if there is not the intent to obey or to perform what is being said, as our lesson text says, all you're doing is deceiving, or all we're doing is deceiving our own selves. Praise God. Amen. Uh, so again, uh, and, and there are many passages that speak to the fact of those that are, you know, hearers only, but not doers of the word. And look, at he, he continues, and he says in verse 23, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Uh, that glass is a mirror, okay? Um, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he, he being not forget, a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. All right. So what is he saying here? What is he saying? Oh, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to hit at it. Uh, uh, with it that, like like you were saying, just can't just hear the word. Mm -hmm. Um, but as the word comes and and just like with a mirror, when you see something, if the Lord brings something to you, if He reveals something to you, then it's that time for you to to change that thing, to um, do whatever the Lord is telling you to do. Um, and you got to be one that you have to do, do it all, mm -hmm. whatever the Lord is saying to do. Just don't hear what he's saying and say, all right, well, I heard the word, but you have to put actions with it. It, it um, almost seems to kind of go back to the earlier parts of the word, what it's saying, um, faith without works you know you can say oh I have faith bless the Lord I got faith I got faith but you're doing nothing with it mm -hmm. you know the Lord is 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 telling you something or you may be praying about something or you seeking the Lord about something and he tells you and, and sometimes when he tells us things it's not exactly what we want to hear or what we think it's mm -hmm. going to be but as we do what God says and as he reveals those things and we go forth and doing what um he has said, then as we do other things, God will bless and God goes before us and mm -hmm. God is, is with us. So. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister this, Patrice. Uh, remind me of the scripture, I believe it's in Matthew, it's right in the seventh chapter, where it says something about um, one that hears these sayings of mine and mm -hmm. do it, shall be likened unto a foolish man, um, that sort of remind me of that. And I was, a foolish man be a man that doesn't know God, correct? Well, I, I think in the context of the, the, the passage that you're talking about, it's, it's sort of, yeah, it's talking about the same thing we're talking about here in that he is a hearer only, he, but not a performer of the word. Right, so and, and in the word, hold on, I lost my train of thought. Mm -hmm. In the word it says, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that reminds me, what, that's what I got out of what you're saying. It took me to Matthew, I think it's in the seventh chapter, somewhere in the 20, doing the, one of the 20th, 23rd, 24th, something like that, 20th. Uh-huh, okay. 20th. Thank you, appreciate yeah. it. Amen. Anyone else? All right, so what, what James does here 
is he gives us an example. Okay, he put uh, he sets forth an example of uh, the the if really the forgetful uh, the forgetful hearer. Okay, and so he says, for if any be a hearer of the word, that is a hearer of the word only and not a doer, he is like unto the man beholding his natural face in a glass or in a mirror, all right? For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. All right, so as long as he is looking in the mirror, he sees everything about himself, all of his features, uh, every every good and every bad thing, all right? All of the blemishes, uh, all of the, uh, if there aren't any, he sees all of this, okay? And he says, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But then he says in verse 25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. So as long as he is looking in the mirror, he's good. He sees what has to be done, all right? And so what it says is, you know, so what he's saying when he goes into, into the next verse, as long as we continue in the word, all right, and continuing means also not just simply uh, hearing it, but doing it. Then again, what we be, you know what we do is we we again set aside, lay us lay apart those things that we talked about earlier, and you take on those things that we need to take on. Okay, and so so when you look at this, and you, you look at the fact that you know as long as we are willing to not just simply hear the word of God, but again, it's, it's kind of like he says, you know, think of yourselves as having a mirror. And as long as you have that mirror, you see exactly where you are. It shows you when you've deviated or when you're on, you know, when you're on task or you're, or, you know, in, in lockstep with the word. And when you're not, it shows you that. But the moment you get out of it, the moment you step away from it, it's like the word of God. The word of God not only shows you, you know, simply, you know, the word of God not just simply shows you uh, when you're doing wrong, but it also shows you when you're doing right. You understand what we're saying? Praise God. Let's go back very quickly. Uh, we read this, uh, I think, at our, uh, one of our uh, last classes. But again, we notice we keep having to refer back to that previous book, uh, Hebrews chapter um, um, 4. For the and, and 12, for the word of God is quick, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and of the marrow, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and, and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. All right. So if we allow the word, if we not only simply hear it, but we embrace it, then the, then the word becomes not only our guide, but it checks us. It not only simply just, you know, is, 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 is you know, again, it, it, it lets us know if, if you want to know, and we talk about this, we talk about being that acceptable sacrifice in, to God. And, and it's something that we don't have to wonder about. If we are obedient to the word of God, guess what? What you know then is that you're well-pleasing in his sight. You don't have to wonder about it because if you're obedient, that's what he wants. You're giving him what he wants, praise God. Amen. And so, and again, it is, it is the idea that he is presenting to them is that you just can't you know, leave off the words. You just can't just, you know, uh, you know, okay, we hear it today and we're good. And tomorrow, you know, until the next time we come together, you know, we're not living by it. We're not abiding by it. All right. We're just like the ones that, that he is talking about in, in Ezekiel. We come, we present ourselves 
before the Lord, to hear the word of God. But the idea has to be that I am going to obey the word of God. I am going to do what his word tells me to do, praise God. And so this is the thing that we have to keep in mind. And, and so here's, you know, one of the other things that it, it takes us back to. He says, being not a forgetful hearer. All right. And, and, and that takes us back to hopefully, well, it may not be something that we pick up on quickly, but it should remind us of Deuteronomy chapter four, verse nine. And it's something that we dealt quite extensively with when we were in the book of Deuteronomy just a short while ago. Um, and Moses brings this up to the people, uh, verse, verse nine, Deuteronomy four and nine. And he makes this statement. He says, only take heed to thyself and keep the soul, thy soul diligently, lest you, thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, praise God. So he again, he, he, he is reminding them, you know, again, to, to take heed to the word of God. And so, you know, be, and if we don't, it makes us a forgetful hearer, praise God. And, and, and when we are a forgetful hearer, guess what? We make no progress in God because the forgetful hearer, not only, amen, praise God, does not abide in the word, but the forgetful hearer also forgets what God has already done for them. Praise God. And we got to keep that in mind. Well, Bishop, uh -huh. I, one of the scriptures that came to me as you were teaching on this and even back up to the um, previous verses um, about hearing the word, I thought about the parable of the sower. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if, if it falls on good ground, it's going to produce fruit. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things I thought about. And if it doesn't, you know, then the enemy can come in and snatch it. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and this is what I think we were saying. I was kind of sort of intimating that when, when we talked about, you know, when hearing or receiving the word of God, we've got to be, we've got to prepare to receive God's word. And so really that good ground was ground that was prepared. You know, all of the things that would work against the seed growing in that ground were dealt with. They, 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 they you know, they plowed it. They, you know, they, you know, they got it ready uh, for the seed to be planted. And it's the same thing with us is, you know, every time we hear, and, and when I say hear the word, I'm not just simply talking about in a class such as this, but even in your own personal study, all right, before you even crack open the word, Lord, help my heart to be prepared to receive your word, what you have here from me. And so, you know, so again, you know, it is, you know, we, we have to, amen, praise God, be prepared. It's even those of us that have received the Holy Ghost, no doubt in many of us, in our cases, when we first heard about salvation, our heart wasn't prepared <laughs> to receive what we heard, praise God. I know mine wasn't, <laughs> amen. But over time, praise God, the Lord dealt with me to a point where, amen, when that time came, my heart was prepared to receive what God was saying, praise God. And so it's important. It is, and, and this is one of the things that, he, that, that, that is in play here is that there is this continual, amen, process of making sure that we're where we need to be so that we can receive of God what he wants us to receive. Praise God. Bishop. Yes. That's, that's so true, because I know when I first started studying the Word of God, mm -hmm. and um, when I was just studying it, um, and I wasn't um, continuing it in mm -hmm. it, then I was losing it. But as I began to study the Word and continue to do it, continue to study it, I realized that I was getting blessed, meaning mm -hmm. that my knowledge was increasing so that when that trial would come, then I would, I would know how to apply that word and remember on the goodness of Jesus and what he promised me. Mm -hmm. So you're right. When you 
when you study in the word, you have to continue with it mm -hmm. and you have to apply it. And then that, that's when your blessing comes. And then that's when you could quote those scriptures and, and, you know, apply. <laughs> so, Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, to me, it, it's sort of like, you know, there's a, there's a passage that talk, talks about that, you know, you know, that the Lord, uh, you know, sort of, you know, he, he, he brings back to our remembrance, you know, but it's kind of like to me, uh, you know, the old cassette recorder, um, you know, and if you forgot to hit record and you just hit, you know, and so when you go back and you or forgot to turn on the mic or what have you, and you go back, all you hear is static, you know, when you play it back and, you know, and, and it's one of those things, you know, as, as, as Psalms 119 <laughs> says, you know, thy word have I hid in mine, mine heart that I might not sin against thee. In other words, I retained it, you know, with the intent of walking up, you know, walking according to it. And, and this is the beauty, like I said, when you've studied and when you've, you know, with the intent of, 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 you know, of obeying the word of God, these are the things that he brings back to your mind. You know, so when you are, when you encounter situations and circumstances and, you know, even in the, you know, in the context of this passage or this chapter that we're dealing with, the trying of one's faith, these are the things, this word is what he brings back to you. Just as when the Lord was being tempted of, of Satan in the wilderness, he was able, praise God, amen, praise the Lord, to deal with that or deal with him, amen, from the position of what was written, praise God, amen. And so it is the same with us and that when, you know, when, as we go through and, and, and you know, it is, there are those passages that call that allow us, Amen. Praise God to uh, uh, that, that, you know, that give us that hope, that give us, Amen. Praise God that when when we're down, that bring us up. But there are also those passages that allow us to speak directly to our enemy. Praise God. And I think those are the ones we kind of forget about a little bit. But guess what? He has given us what His Word, which is the sword of the spirit, praise God. And so, amen, there are those times when you have to go on the offense, if you will, amen, praise God, and, and, and speak, amen, praise God, to that spirit that is, that, is, that is trying to oppose you, that is trying to distract you, praise God, whether it be you, or man, praise God, or that which you come into contact with. I, I'm, I'm just one of those, maybe there are many of here here uh, today that don't necessarily believe, amen, praise God, in, 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 in dealing with spirits and things of this nature, but Paul tells us, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. All right, our struggle is not against flesh people, but it's against principalities, amen, it's against demonic forces, praise God. And so when we look at that, but what do we go against them with? We go against them with the word of God, praise God. And so that is, you know, again, and, and, and what gives us the authority to use the word of God? It is the spirit of God, amen, praise God that we have in us. Remember, the seven sons of Sceva, amen, praise God, when they tried to exercise uh, a, de a demon out of an individual and what, he, what, what, the, what the demon in, in him recognized, they had no authority, amen, praise God, to do what they did. And let me tell you, praise God, when you have the spirit of God in you, praise God, amen, demonic forces recognize that, praise God. And so, amen, what, and, and that is understanding, and this is why it is so important to know our position with God, where we sit, where we stand with him, and what we have authority over, and all of these things. But again, it is it, it all is predicated upon us, amen, praise God, being in that right relationship with God, being in fellowship with God. It is not someone, amen, we're not talking about the to the individual that is straddling the fence, that's trying to make up in their mind, am I going to serve him or am I not, praise God. But he's talking, amen, praise the Lord, to the one 
ones, amen, that have made up in their mind, amen, praise God, that I am going to serve the Lord. And to those that haven't, I want to encourage you, amen, praise God, now is the time, amen, praise the Lord, to serve God. And, and not only just, amen, praise God, one day a week, praise the Lord, but amen, we're talking about, amen, to, to getting to the point where the Lord truly is the Lord of our life, amen. And, and that is, I, I recognize, amen, it, it, it can be a process for us to get there, but that's the direction that we want to be going in, man, praise God, is making, allowing the Lord rather to become that Lord of our life, amen. Forgetting about, amen, simply what we need and, and, and saying, amen, praise God, yielding ourselves, amen, to him. Just as remembering when the Lord first filled you with the Holy Ghost, what did you do? You surrendered yourself to him. Praise God. Amen. You, you forgot all about him and everything else, and you just simply surrendered to him. And this is the thing. We have to continue to live that surrendered life unto him. Lord, I'm yours. Praise God. Amen. And so, you know, but if we're not careful, praise God. And, and, and that's why, again, it, it's just so important. Let, let me just continue down because I, I have a point I need to make here. And he says, Amen. I'll read again verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Now he goes on to say here, if any man among you seen that think if to be religious and bridal, if that is not, he cannot restrain his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion or service really, really is in vain. So he says in verse 27, pure religion, that is clean, that is, amen, undefi and undefiled before God, that is without blemish, and the father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows. All right, the fatherless are the orphans. The widows, amen, praise God. He's talking about the widow indeed who has no son, no relative to take care of her, praise God, in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world, to keep himself unspotted from the world. I think we recognize that, but look at what he says, to visit the fatherless and the widows. It is again, service unto others, praise God and to keep himself unspotted. I guess what I'm trying to get across to us is too much of our time is tied up in, Lord, what I need. Lord, I, what I need you to give me. When what Will, when James is saying here, look, if, 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 if any man among you seems to be religious, in other words, again, you know, that, that one that not only simply worships in the sense that, amen, he praises God with his tongue and his mouth and with his feet in a dance, amen, but it is also to do service unto God. And so he says here that that, that pure religion, that undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows. This is what God did. When the Lord was here, we're supposed to do go about doing the same things that he did as well, praise God. So, uh, you know, again, it is getting to the point, amen, praise God, or positioning ourselves to the point, amen, in God that we can do service unto God. You all see what I'm saying? Praise God. Again, too much time is spent on what we need, what we got to have, what we need the Lord to do for us. And essentially, a lot of times, amen, praise God, your deliverance, praise God, those things that may be required, amen, praise God, are sometimes even tied to you doing service unto the Lord, giving God what he wants of us, praise God. Amen. If you if you listen to our songs, if you listen to many of our testimonies and, and all of these things, it's all about, amen, praise God, just simply praising him or, or thanking him for, amen, he, he answered this prayer and he answered, and, and those things are great, but the mindset has to grow beyond just simply what God can do for us to the point where we're able to do a work for the Lord. The Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, could never, 
and, and have left, have ascended, as we see in Acts chapter one, praise God, and tell his, his disciples, his apostles, and then the, 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 those disciples knew exactly what the Lord needed them to know, praise God. And so when you think about it, when you look at what they did, they immediately sprang into action. What do I mean? They, they, they served God. Praise God. It wasn't about, amen, praise God. It, it wasn't about just simply, Lord, give me this and Lord, give me that. And the, the, the appeals, the petitions to God, amen, praise God, were primarily those, amen, that were when, when, they, when opposition came, they prayed, praise God, that the Lord would give them the boldness to do what he required of them to do. So when you look at Amen. Praise God. How they went about doing what they were doing. Praise God. What you see, what is glaringly obvious is the service unto the Lord. Not, not just simply sitting back and saying and, and seeing what they could get from God, a new home, a new house, a new car or whatever. Amen. But the energy praise God was spent in doing service unto God. And that becomes, amen, praise God, the major challenge even for us today is moving simply beyond, amen, praise God, our needs, our individual needs, my, 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 my family's needs, amen, and recognizing what God has, amen, praise God, for his people to do. And, and so, you know, it, 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 it looks simple in verse 27. It looks, I mean, it, it's easy perhaps Amen. Praise God for us just to just, you know, just to see it and just gloss over it. But it's it's major. It, it, it speaks to the mentality. It speaks to the mindset that we have to have. If you call yourself doing service unto God, this is how we do it. Amen. This is the mentality. We're doing it unto others. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. And so, amen, keep that in mind, praise God. Amen. You know, uh, you, we can get to a point, praise, and, 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 and you know, I, 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 I must be honest for, for me, you know, when you see this and you see just simply that, you know, folks, uh, you know, many of us are just concerned about just simply us. And when you recognize, amen, and, and you look at the word and you see, amen, our examples here and how, amen, praise God, it was all about doing the work of the Lord. You know, Paul, amen, praise God, getting toward his end and writing to Timothy and, you know, says, I, I am now ready to be offered up. And other words, he's telling him, you know, I have spit all that I have, I have given him all that I could give him. Speaking of his service, amen, praise God to the Lord. And, and that's one of the things, you know, each and every one of us has to sit down and ask ourselves the question, what am I doing for him? What am I doing for him? For him? Praise God. Amen. I'm not telling you to go out, to sit down and, and, and write up a plan of what you're going to do for him. You don't need, he doesn't need our plan. He needs us to be the willing, available vessel. Praise God. Amen. And so, amen, it has to, we, we have to move from just simply being able to testify about what God, you know, I prayed for this and he gave me this, but it's bigger than that. Praise God. Remember, you know, he talks about, praise God, amen. Go with me to, I believe, First Peter. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to try to bring this down, praise the Lord. But he, he First Peter uh, chapter 2, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's second, first Peter chapter two, verse nine, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Praise God. He speaks of them as being a royal priesthood. That priesthood, amen, did service unto God. Praise God. He made them his people. The priest, he did not give a possession to. Why? Because, amen, praise God, he was their possession. 
praise the Lord. And all that he wanted them to do was service unto me, serve me, praise God. And serve him just simply me. It is more than simply when, when, we're, when we're just simply asking the Lord for, you know, again, the next thing, praise God, and all of this, that's not serving him. Amen. But that is being, praise God, at his beck and call. That is that one that had made up in their mind, you know, I, I'm just going to lay before the Lord. I'm going to seek God and, and I'm going to allow God to use me any way he can or any way he wants to. Praise God. Amen. We have to make that shift, you all. We have to make that transition. We, 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 we seemingly uh, just simply, amen, at a place. And if you look at it, we're kind of like Israel, amen, praise God in the wilderness, just simply, amen, asking for one thing after another, after another, after another, after another. Praise God. Amen. And we need to get to the point, praise the Lord, where we can do service, praise God, unto the Lord. Isaiah, amen, in chapter six, after his transforming vision, praise God, and the, and the call went out, who will go? Or who can we send, praise God? Isaiah is saying, hear my Lord, send me. I'll serve you, praise God. I will serve you. So when James talks about, amen, praise the Lord, in the, in the first chapter, praise the Lord, in verse number one, he says, James, a servant of God. So what does that mean? A servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. I am his servant. I am here to serve him. Praise God. That has to become the mentality of every child of God. I am his servant. I'm here in this earth, this earth to serve him. Praise God. Hallelujah. We all, we all see this, I hope. Amen. Praise God. So, you know, I know, and I'm not telling us not to cry to him in a time of need, but there must be, you know, that growth that takes place to the point where we realize, amen, praise God, you know, it is, is it is truly is about doing service doing his will, praise God. When he talks about, again, when he, amen, praise God, redeemed us and, and, and he has this, this body, this called out ecclesia, this, this, this church, praise the Lord, amen. Again, we're not just simply here, amen, to, to just wave our hands and to say we are the church, but we, amen, as James, are the servant of God, we're, uh, the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're here to do his will. Amen. And so that must become, you know, our mentality, praise God, is, is Lord, what would you have me to do? That, that you know, there's nothing wrong, amen, with, with that becoming the theme of your day. Lord, what would you have me to do today? What is it? What can I do for you? Praise God. Amen. That is, that is putting his will, that is putting him before ourselves. And see, knowing and understanding this, that God knows everything we need. He knows. How many know that? Amen. There are, Amen. Some, there Amen. are some things today, right now, that he knows that we need, that we don't know that we need. And the Lord is saying, I got you. Do you have me? <laughs> so all you have to, all we have to do is focus our attention, our energies, praise God, on doing the will, praise the Lord, of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, yes, I, I, yes, mother. Go ahead. Um, going back to verse. Uh, James, I think it was 25, uh -huh. we were talking about that. Um, the, the scriptures came to me over in Psalms, uh -huh. uh, the second and the third verse, and it was on me, so I just wanted to get this in before we get off. Okay, Psalms, which, which chapter? Psalms, 
first song. Oh, yes, okay. Uh huh. Let, um, it's verse two and three. Uh huh. Talking about, you were talking about continuing. Yes. And it said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in his law does he <laughs> meditate day and night. Yes. And he shall be like a tree planted yes. by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. So, so, so when you were talking about that, that just came up in my spirit, and I went and looked it up, and I'm like, that's almost saying, it's almost parallel. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. Look, look at what it says uh, about his, his fruit. Yes. All right. Praise God. It talks about, amen, and he should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His yeah. fruit and, and his leaf and all shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Shall prosper. God. Amen. Amen. So when the Lord blesses us, we bless others. And I'm not just simply talking about monetary or whatever, but he uh, puts us in a position to meet the need of others, praise God, to encourage, amen, praise God, to help them along this path, amen, to convict. I mean, you know, to bring about conviction of the need of salvation and all of these things. And, and so when it talks about that tree by the water, it's talking about some that is consistent. All right. It has, amen, praise God. It has a, um, a, a, a source of strength that does not stop. Planted by the rivers of water. So it's, amen, praise the Lord. Who is our river of water? The spirit of God, the Lord himself. Amen. And we shall not wither. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. Amen. I still say we don't know when to dance. We don't know when to shout. We don't know when to get up and run around the table. Amen. I'll rejoice with you. If I could run around this desk, I can't, I got an L-shaped desk, so I can't run around the desk. Amen. But I, 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 see, oh, if you could just, you know how, do you realize, you know how it is sometimes you want somebody to feel what you feel? <laughs> the joy that you feel, Amen. the Amen. excitement that you feel. Glory. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. And oh, that men would praise the Lord. Praise, praise God. Yes. Yes. Because it's oh, magnify the Lord. With me. Let us exalt his name. Glory to God. Together, God. praise God. Amen. 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 Let me let me just I, one more scripture, and I'm gonna stop. But let me tell you what happens when we serve God and we do the work of God. And you know, here's what happens. And you know, and sometimes it, it happens that it creates opposition and all of this. Praise God. Amen. But I believe it was in Acts. Praise God. Amen. Um. The, uh, uh, the, 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 the fourth chapter, and this is the first time they, they were taken in uh, and, and put in prison and, and threatened. And they came back among their own. And it says, praise the Lord, that in, in verse 23, 4, Acts 4 and 23, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David have said, why did the heathen rage? and the people imagined vain things. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ for the for of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determine before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. 
by stretching forth thine pan to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Think about this. That is the prayer of servants. That is the prayer of those that serve God. Praise God continually. Lord, we are meeting with our position, but we believe you, praise God. We're not going to stop. Amen, praise God. They're telling us don't, but we can't stop. Praise God. Don't speak in your name, but we cannot stop. Praise God. And he, he, they, they just simply said, amen, praise God. Amen, glory to God. Just this Lord, give us, uh, the, the, you know, just this grant unto thy, look at what he says. Grant unto thy, there's that word again, servants. Servants that with all boldness, they may speak thy word. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. We're sitting here saying, Lord, give me boldness, but we're not speaking. You need boldness in the midst of what you're doing. Praise God. Not two, two, two years before you even get there, but when that time comes, praise God, hallelujah. And what they, what they realize is we have opposition now. There is a, there's a competing force that's coming against us. So Lord, give us, grant us the boldness to do what you called us to do. Praise God. God bless you today. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Elder uh, Blispy, praise the Lord. God bless you all. Amen. We, we should begin in our next lesson. Amen. Chapter two. Amen. In Jesus name. God bless you in the name of the Lord. Peace God. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Thank the Lord for the words. Uh, again, great lesson. Praise the Lord, Natalie and Sister Danielle. It's nice to see you today for a change. 